Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining our tonight's Hello Town event. I'm Florence Chen, Vice President of AIA Hong Kong. And uh, oh, thank you. Tonight, I'll be leading a discussion together with Sean uh, for, uh, for this fire check, a fire side check, not a fire check. <laughs> For those who are not familiar with AIA, um, the, the fellowship program, let me do a little bit of an introduction. Um, the AIA fellowship program was developed to acknowledge architects who have made significant contributions to architecture, society, and have achieved a standard of excellence in the profession. No doubt our guest, Sean, tonight goes above and beyond what I've just said. Um, the AIA College of Fellows seek to simulate a sharing of interests among the fellows and encourage them to promote purposes of the Institute, advance the professions of architecture, mentoring young architects like us, as well as be an ever increasing service to the society. So since 2008, I think it was uh, Anderson who has started the Hello, Hello Fellow program, um, where we invited FAIA from our chapters to join us to share with us uh, their career path. And in the past, we have uh, William Lim, uh, Nelson Chen, who is on the line right now, and also more uh, Moza to, to uh, join us for the Hello Fellow event in the past. So this year, we are very honored to have Sean to, to join us for the event. Uh, Sean is a an architect of over 30 years of experience in urban design and also in, in managing this uh, ACOM, like a huge like engineering plus architecture urban design company. Uh, Sean serves as the Asian chairman as well as the chief executive of buildings and places global business line at ACOM. Um, where he is actively overseeing the global business as well as the operation and mobilization of ACOM's international talents across the company. Um, he has spearheaded many of the award winning uh, projects, a lot of the master plan, including those in KL, in Philippines, as well as in China. In addition to the uh, FAIA, Sean has, uh, has been the global trustees of the Urban Land Institute, the ULI, um, a member of the Asian Society Executive Committee, Harvard University's Master in Design Engineering External Advisor, as well as a council member for the Harvard GSD Dean's Leadership Council. A very long list of uh, commitment to our society. Um, so uh, can you join me in welcoming Sean for this event? Yeah. So let me start, Sean, by... Um, uh, Talk about some of my impression about you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think Sean and I meet a couple of times, yes. uh, mainly through the GSD alumni events. Correct. Yes, and the image of you uh, for me has always been like a very well established executive with power and authority, and almost like a godfather kind of image. And okay. uh, so it's, I'm actually a little nervous uh, today in like holding this discussion and, and have a conversation. So to ease my fear, let's start with something light and easy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us something about um, your, your, your childhood. Like uh, what, what, what have you, tell, um, like when you grow up, do you always have a very clear goals or like um, do you always know you want to be an architect or urban designer? Okay, um, I, I didn't, you know, I mean, I, my childhood actually, I, I was very uh, weak um, kid. I was, I was sick all the time. Mm -hmm. So I stayed home a lot. Um, I don't, I don't really participate in a lot of kids' activities like running, playing, swimming. I, up to now, to be honest, I still don't swim. I don't either. Because, because um, cold, you know, I mean, you play very well protected because you're weak or sick. I, I have asthma for many, many years. I don't know if you're a 
uh, but it just can you can run you can do things you know like other kids and, and you know you're very allergic to something that they have to eat that's not even happening. so so I spend a lot of time at home so and what do you do at home you read you read a lot and you paint a lot and then I did a lot of Chinese calligraphy you know so all these things became time and I, I I listened to a lot of music or at that time when I was young, really, now there's no TV. You can figure out how old I, I was. And I there's a radio, right? This radio box, and then you hear a lot of radio, all the information is on the radio. So so I was I was I was I was you know, again, kind of shy that didn't have a lot of confidence. I mean I'm totally introvert. So I doesn't matter how many times you did the test, um, the result is always you're an introvert, you're an introvert. But when I tell people I'm an introvert, nobody believes it. <laughs> you introvert, no way. But so that's how I grew up. And um, I, I grew up in a very conservative uh, family, and middle class, and both of my parents are uh, teachers, right? So education is the only thing you know, in their mind. Uh, my parents came from mainland China, so they, they always say, we came in, we have nothing, we have no land, we have nothing. The only thing we can we can give you is good education. So they work really hard, you know, and make sure we study hard. So good and bad, right? So when you make sure you study hard, that means you really study hard. <laughs> but I, in a way, I hate to study. I'm, I, I'm not, not very kind of believe in memorized things. Right, so because the old artistic thing I enjoy, so and then gradually architecture showed up. You know, this kind of thing showed up in my mind. Um, I, I want to do so. I at that time I I, I was born and brought up in Taiwan. I don't know if you know that. Um, and then and Taiwan has this um, national exam, right? It's like China, you pass the exam. And you go to school once, but I wasn't very, I, I wasn't very good students at that time. So I didn't get a very good grade, but I want to go to the university as the best architecture school at that time. So I, I fill out all the all the department in that university, and then end up in Kansas. <laughs> because I, I learned if, you know, before I go, I, I know they, they um, you can you can transfer to architecture program. So I'm very determined. So I want to go to that. I don't have a trust. I am the only architect in Taiwan or in either plan that for the campus plan for that uh, from the uh, contact the building style layout. So, so I'm very, very determined that I want to go to that school. So I feel like all the department and I end up in uh, chemistry department. And I never study so hard because um, I hate chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but I'm very determined that I want to go study architecture and then, um, and then transfer. The only way you can transfer is you have to. The first semester, you have to pass all the courses. You know, it doesn't matter, good or bad, it's no great, it just pass. I had a hard time to pass it. So physics, um, chemistry, um, calculus, you know. So I passed it so hard. Very Holidays, um, everybody went home um, for the holiday. I still stay in the dorm by myself and then study to make sure I pass the exam because I, I was very, very good. So, so luckily I made it. That was really the first step. If I missed that, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> so, so I, I, I went to that architecture school and then. Okay, you mentioned you're very determined to be an architect. Why? Um, 
Um, what attracts you to be an architect? Because my parents say you have to have a skill. <laughs> <laughs> and then I look, I look at the, you know, I mean, if you want to have something with you, I mean, traditional mind, you have to have a skill, right? Even you're a carpenter or, 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 or a chef. So, you know, you can right? And that's the old tradition. Your parents say, you know, I mean, so so in the parents' mind, you know, I couldn't have, maybe I can study literature or theater or mm -hmm. whatever, because I, I, I enjoy them very much, or even fashion design, to be honest. But at that time, what? You know, you want to learn how to cook, or you want to learn how to, um, you know, I mean, and the literature and what what are you going to do you know so 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 and then if i look at all these so-called skill i believe that's the skill I, I really believe i can do well and enjoy it good look to yourself point number one right. be determined yeah okay and uh, so you then study architecture and graduated from UC Berkeley. Right? And after that, you kind of shifted the focus a little bit to the urban design, right? And and what inspired you to, to move on? No, I, I don't think it's... Um, I think that since I study architecture, I'm, 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 then I realized my interest is not about buildings or putting mm -hmm. buildings together. I'm more interested about a kind of a, a group of buildings or a, a community. So I remember the first studio is really the uh, design studio um, in my uh, freshman. It's really you find a site um, near our campus. It's kind of a local community. You go find a site in some, and everybody finds a site that you're building. And I just find an empty space, a <laughs> filled space, and then and I start designing that space how to relate to the surroundings. Mm. I don't know why. I just I just think that to me is more intriguing mm. than just do a building you know, because I maybe I'm more ambitious. I want a bigger impact to that community. Mm -hmm. So, and then every time my <laughs> design um, kind of a, a course or a design studio, I, I, a lot of time, many, many times I'll, I'll always find something related to the surroundings rather than looking inwards from the building itself. Mm -hmm. You know, and then so, um, um, and then, I, I got into Berkeley at GST at the same time, you know, and then got accepted. I didn't want to go to GST, actually. I want to go to Berkeley. And my, my parents, again, talk about Chinese parents, they were so upset. You crazy. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I say, no, I'm not. I wasn't, you know, I thought Berkeley is really cool, you know. <laughs> So um, my father was very upset, you know, and then he's saying, okay, why don't you write to GSD and see if they can respond? And mm -hmm. I did they say, okay, just pay the cost. <laughs> <laughs> Money works. Yeah, so I went to I went to Berkeley and then uh -huh. um, I went to GSD. You know, so it was responded. So then people say crazy but you I say I didn't really want to go to <laughs> So you found the shortest program. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, 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 I enjoyed that very much. I enjoyed Berkeley because I, I think it was really good transition. I, I was, I, I, I'm not sure if I can survive very well from Taiwan to Cambridge. I think Berkeley gave me a very good transition about. Because I think California, people of Berkeley, is much more um, flexible or much more appreciate like, um, Asians or mixed culture, you know, mm. rather than Cambridge, right? So 
I, I, some of my friends was having a hard time. But just not only just weather, it's everything. You know, you know, Boston is very white or black. Black is one color, white is stone. Mm -hmm. Especially yeah. when it was like what in his eighties, right? Yeah, late eighties. Right. Not early eighties. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, so, so I, I was very, I was very, um, I think I was very lucky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was um, when you were twenty something. So by that time, do you yeah. felt like you have fixed the issue about being an introvert, or did you attempt to do anything, or you just be honest with this is who I am, or like? Yeah. No. I mean, you you, you don't change. You know? Just you get you get. You learn how to um, behave a little bit differently when you're in a different environment. Mm -hmm. right? You want to, you want to uh, blend in as much as you can. So of course you have to learn how to blend in, mm -hmm. behave right, and speak the right thing. You know? So it was, it was very difficult, particularly at that time. Taiwan is still very under the martial law. I don't know if you know the history. Um, Tom didn't live the martial law after I left. So um, mm -hmm. when we're in college, you're not even allowed to dance, right? That's kind of a bad thing. You can't dance, you can't be really at the normal. And nowadays it's nothing, it's like social life, you know? So, so and then, so when I, and then, and of course, all the, all the mindset is very, very controlled by the uh, government at that time, right? It's almost brand pushed. So when I first came to work, that's the reason why I really enjoy it. Oh my God, this, this is not what I was wrong. I was told the black is not black, white is not white, you know? So it, it was a big struggle. Mm -hmm. Everything is deconstructed. And then I have to put everything piece by piece together. And then, but I think that's great because then, um, then you build your own value. So when I arrived Berkeley, that was anti-apartheid at that time, right? You know, all these beautiful campus, but it was shitty yeah, because all the students, you know, build up the, the, the tent and camp and campus. <laughs> I'm wondering maybe my father was right. I shouldn't come to work with him. Yeah. But then you realize that moment you, you rebuild yourself. Right. And when you graduated, you how do you decide to land on your first job? I just want to find a job. <laughs> I've been studying for so long. And the, the one thing I, I didn't mention is in Taiwan that time I have to do two years military service. Compulsory, mm -hmm. right? You have to learn how to kill people, right? <laughs> or defend yourself, right? So two years I was totally wasteful. So 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 and then don't even mention about I don't forget I trans transfer from chemistry department to <laughs> To um, that. yeah, so so I basically lost three years, mm -hmm. so I kind of behind. I was three years behind other people. So I I I want to I want to find a job. I want to make money. I want my parents to tell me what to do because 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 they're paying all my mm -hmm. or financially support. Mm -hmm. You know, so so I just want to find a job. I I. I, at that time, 1988, I remember the economy was bad. And then um, the people say, okay, uh, we can offer you a job, we really like you, but can you wait until um, um, in fall? You know, so we have a better idea about the economy. Because I was, I was looking for a job. My last semester in school, I wasn't really focused on studying. I thought my mind was find a job, find a job. I want to be financial. So I, I start preparing my portfolio resume in you know, February. So I start setting up the job. 
know, so I, I did a job. I graduated, I think graduation in May. I started working in the beginning of June. Because I'm very determined, again, very determined that I want to be financially independent. Mm -hmm. I don't want to wait for August. What am I going to do in the summer? So mm -hmm. call my dad, say, send me some money. I don't have money. Mm -hmm. you know, so I, I'm very determined. I'm still single. I don't have family for the back east. But, it, it, but after all, I still want to be financially independent. So I just found a job in San Francisco in a lot of industry. Every so way, way, way back to fall, so we can offer you something. But I'm glad I didn't wait because the economy didn't come out, mm -hmm. right? And then actually, the economy actually got worse, but at least at that time, I had a job in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And then I want to find a job. You know, <laughs> so at that time, you know, at that time, if I say I want to find a job through architecture and urban design together, mm -hmm. because I'm very Passionate about early design, but I, I feel like I'm an architect. I want to get my license. You know, I want to uh, find an uh, architecture firm can do urban design, right? And actually, finally, and then um, I, I didn't remember how I educated and I saw it. To say, no, it's not really bad things. You know, architecture can do urban design. So either you're urban design from your architecture, you really find it. You're yeah, so doing that, I think. Right, but <laughs> not really. Yeah. Uh, Phil Hanquist, he interviewed he, 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 I think he's retired. He, 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 I saw him in San Francisco and moved to Chicago. He tried to hire him twice. He felt, I don't know. Okay. But anyway, so so and then I found a job in San Francisco and they said, oh, we do architecture, urban design, and show this. I said, oh, yeah, great. And, so I, and then I found out they basically do urban design, huh. little architecture. So and then that's also like, I think it's all fate because I, I like it, I enjoy it, you know, I continuously, you know, do good work, deliver good design, and then. You know, I mean, I enjoy it, so I, I never tried to leave that company mm -hmm. and to do um, architecture. So I didn't just go further. <clears throat> How long were you in that office? Four years. Mm -hmm. Up to now, still, I, I really appreciate that because they're very focused, small firm, 30, 30, um, 40 people. They're very, very devoted because mm -hmm. they partner, they know how they're going to be. Mm -hmm. So they don't have to worry about money and stuff. They just do design, do design, do design. And then I think that's very important, you know, because they're not financially stressed. Mm -hmm. They they just want to do great design so they can build your um, great work. They get their great work built. So you travel like I don't know, you know, Third Street Promenade in Santa Monica. It's not urban design. They get things built urban design. That's mm -hmm. great. It's not just a plan. They get mm -hmm. things built and then they go all the way to the construction details. So mm -hmm. they did a lot of um, public will, you know, transformations, you know, I mean, San Francisco, um, the, the ferry buildings, the plaza in front of it, you know, mm -hmm. the pier, the piers, um, some of the pier 39, you know, they really careful about details, mm -hmm. not just mass plan. When I talk about urban design, it's not just mass plan. They, they design the, the, the place and then they get that built so they can transform the community. You know, so that's that's how I was trained mm -hmm. with, the, with the very solid um, uh, kind of training because the thing is we never give up you just keep pushing for the best part. That's great. And um, I think that, that, yeah, we can move on to this whole discussion about urban design and master design. So I think for every of the professionals, you usually have a project that has the most impact on your career or your professional development. Can you share with us like a project that you think that it has the most impact on you in terms of the professional development? 
Um, I think I think uh, the, the biggest transition was really the work in China because I then I moved to Hong Kong and then I started working in the China project. There's really these, I don't know if you know this very famous project called Jinji Lake in Suzhou, right? It's it's a huge lake front, right? So we were hired, I still remember very clearly 1997. Um, 1997, um, and I just joined this company from, uh, well, from the first one I joined, uh, HOK, from HOK, HOK sent me to Hong Kong, and then I changed the job and then joined uh, this company called, uh, you know, in the um, And then we got this, uh, GG Ecology, it's, it's just, it's just, uh, when, when we traveled from Shanghai to Suzhou, it's not even one single freeway, 1997. And then they're building the first freeway. When you get on the freeway, and you go, go out like a local road, and you have chicken running, you know, and, and they, they're feeding uh, grains, and they're putting it from Shiny and Bay, right? Uh, that we call the companies. So that was 1997. They ask us, oh, you, um, we have this lake, um, um, Singaporean coming in best, we want to do this wonderful town. Um, um, just give a friend, tell us how to plant trees. Just um, shrub it up. That's why they say shrub it up, just new walk, right? Just green, green the hell out of it. Make green, it's new walk. Um, and then they want because and then Chinese have this kind of very odd way they got to plant a tree um, before the chicken, right? <laughs> so, um, so we have to finish on everything by chicken. And then 1997, we got this idea of, um, I can tell you now, it's about a million plus US dollars. Just shrug it out. <laughs> One million US dollars is a lot of money at that time. Long time. But and then we 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 I wouldn't say we're not here, but we say, oh great, we got this thing we need to do something. Yeah. Mm. So we start not just do green, we do urban design. So, okay, wow, this 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 area should do that. Mm. We should so give them a very, very exciting vision. And then, and then we took the um, government officials to the states and then we showed them all this fantastic urban space and or particularly waterfront space, mm -hmm. right? We took them to visit different cities, um, like San Francisco, like, you know, different skill, give them a sense of skill like that, but it's, it's almost like a training. You know, and then years and years after now, we're still working with Chinji. Chinji, our company is still very engaged with Chinji. Chinji becomes one of the most iconic plants in China. Um, and then a lot of people around the world, mm -hmm. not around, but around China, at that time, mm -hmm. it's almost like um, Chinese was in Chaoshan, but everybody go to Suzhou to see Chinji. You know, and then um, they even put uh, later on that uh, they put this bronze sign, right? The people China, the bronze sign is historical or culture, right? So, and then even put bronze sign on the freeway, sell GG Lake. It's like, <laughs> you know, so, so that to me, it's not on the project itself, so it's really changed people's mind to mm -hmm. say about. Land development, change people minds, how, how to do this very thorough urban design, design guidelines from mm -hmm. implementation to add values mm -hmm. to your community. Yeah, and the impact it has on the on, on people's life of it. Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, yeah, so Jinji Lake, mm -hmm. you guys all been to Jinji Lake? Or Suzhou. Yeah. Or Suzhou. Another destination on your map. Um, okay, 
So um, since the Jinji, like, I mean, that was 1997. So it has already been like 20 plus years. Do you see any difference in the way that urban design or master plan design are being practiced? Um, I think, yes. I think people are much more, much more conscious about public domain. Mm -hmm. And then they see the value rather than just building itself. Mm -hmm. You know, and of course, you know, I, I think people still enjoy or worship iconic building. Mm -hmm. You know, that's something probably can never change. Mm -hmm. um, but from a professional point of view, they're much more conscious about uh, the other project I, I forgot to mention uh, is really uh, if you've been to Manila, uh, Fossil Global City, mm -hmm. that's all yes. that was also my last right? Mm -hmm. so, you know, that was done in 1995 to 1990. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So that was also something I'm very, very proud of. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us more about like what are the aspects that? You, you, you know Manila, the yeah. transportation, I mean, the, the traffic, the pollution, um, and then it's not really, it's, you know, Makati, everybody, you know, Makati, yeah. but now you go to Bonifacio Global City, you know, I mean, it's totally different world. I mean, it's a walkable, there's a sidewalk, the street trees, you know, it's, it's um, 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 walkable blocks. That's all this. The basic idea was trained, right? Create a walkable environment. Mm -hmm. Along cities, it's not designed to walk. But all the men have wonderful cities, like New York or uh, London or you know, Tokyo. It's all unwalkable things and then public space, decent size of sidewalks. You, should, you think about it, it's very easy. It's used, but you just don't know why people don't practice that. Right? And it's very, very simple principles. And then I I was very young, and so was my another my first one of my first jobs. I just designed it, they built it. Mm. And then now it's, it's very, very successful. If you've never been to Manila, um, you can go Makati and you can go on Fossil It's very, very common. Certainly the the impact that an urban design and or urban planning that can make to people is even more direct and straightforward than compared to just a single building. So yeah. Okay, so um going back to the practice, okay. Um so ACOM is a Fortune 500 companies listed as 157 in 2019 with uh, employees of over eight. We used to have a we used to have a ninety five thousand people, mm. and then now we down to fifty five thousand. Okay. Yeah, because we sell um, a big chunk of it. Mm -hmm. You know, so we're still fifty five thousand. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, so, what was the question? I have a mask. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so what is so? Uh, it's a hugely successful company in short. Um, so you have taken a new role as the chief executive of the Buildings and Places Global Business Line since last year, like October last year. It's a pretty new role. It's a new role. And, yeah. And before that, you were served as the president of Asia Pacific for April, Correct. right? Um, so can you tell us something about what's the difference, difference. in the role that you have before and after? Um, the reason why I changed my role is because um, we have a new CEO. And we, we changed the CEO last year in August. Okay, so and then he decided he wants to restructure mm -hmm. the company. Okay. Um, so the previous structure is organized by geography. Globally, you have a, you know, how do we organize? Everybody say, how do you guys do this? Mm -hmm. So we have three major geographies. Um, one is America, you know, North America. Um, United States, Central and South America, that's America. When you look at a globe, that's, it's like one vertical zone. Uh, and then and then you move to um, Europe. Mm -hmm. Europe and Middle East, mm -hmm. that's another zone. And Africa, Europe, mm -hmm. Africa, Middle East, that's another zone, right? 
So the third geography, that's why I was running for six years, APAC. Mm -hmm. So APAC is um, Greater China, that's Hong Kong, Taiwan, then in China, Hong Kong, it's Greater China, Southeast Asia, India, Australia, New Zealand. Mm -hmm. So I was the president. I, I, my responsibility is around that. When I say responsibility, is about everything, including financial performance. Mm -hmm. Financial performance, we have all kinds of indicators, you know, because we're publicly listed. Financial performance is very, very critical related to our stock price. Uh, so that means your revenue, your margin, your uh, profitability, and your cash flow, and, um, and your booking, your backlog. How did you learn all about that? Yeah, from an urban designer. You know, step by step, you know, and then, so, so I, I, I'm responsible for all of that for six years, very stressful. Um, <laughs> and then, um, not only that, I trained as an architect, but mm -hmm. when I say responsible, everything including transportation, civil engineer, tunnel, bridge, you know, airport, everything. Then you, then you say, why are you just an architect? Because I was asked. You know, and then actually it's quite unusual they ask an architect to run a big sewage. I guess they trusted me, so I've been working with not only just architects, planners, and then I start working with lots of engineers, environmental <laughs> scientists, water, um, and then all kinds of people. So that was before. That gave me a very solid practice. But, but the problem with that, I shouldn't say problem, is because each geography is, is big enough. We have 15,000 people in Japan. We're very, very self independent. Mm -hmm. well, I don't really have to technically work with America or Europeans mm -hmm. uh, to deliver my financial performance, right? I mean, if we need someone to hire or hire someone from the UK, Relocate to Hong Kong, relocate to Shanghai, you know, keep ourselves is a, is a very self independent. Mm -hmm. So we lost that kind of a connectivity. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we claim uh, we're a global company. We do global things, but very selective mm -hmm. because there's really something we cannot do. And we'll, we'll do, for example, I was trying to build a healthcare practice. We didn't really have healthcare, so I need to leverage our capability from UK or, or the United States to help us to build that. At that time, very strategically, I pick, cherry pick what I want from us to build something. Once this is stabilized and will become you know, independent. And then the new leaders came. Okay, last August, he decided um, I want to flatten the organization. I don't want big three chunk. I want seven regions. So we break from three to seven geography, or we call it region because they're smaller. Okay. So and then you flatten it, but if you continue to work independently, then that means you become weaker, right? You have less resources, less talents. So and then so our CEO ask us to do this connectivity called Global Business Line. Okay, so we have five Global Business Line. That's transportation, water, environment, buildings and places. Mm -hmm. And then the new one is project management. Okay. You run a big, complicated project. That's a new business. So I'm in charge of global business because there's no APAC anymore. Either you go, you lost your job, because there's no APAC anymore. Because APAC becomes Asia and ANZ, Australia, New Zealand. So it breaks to two smaller regions. So that means either I don't have a job or I have a different job. Right. So then luckily, fortunately, my my, my CEO think, oh Sean, I still use you. <laughs> so oh right, you're an architect. You never forget, you know, I'm passionate about the building environment. Architecture, building engineer, urban design. So, why don't you run the global buildings, uh, buildings and places? 
So then now my responsibility is to really contact the global, all the global architects, planners, landscape architects, you know, just in that field. So I have a, a, a very large size pool from the United States to Canada, to Europe, you know, to um, uh, Middle East, to of course, Asia and Australia. And so this group is all under me. In a way, it is even more responsibility. Yes, more complex. The more complex in the sense that it's different time zones right. and different right. talents across the whole right. globe. Particularly, it's hard is because the COVID, you know, right? The, the changes last fall, and then because the COVID, so so everybody stay home, so they can make a lot of phone calls, right? Or mm -hmm. team meeting or Zoom meetings, uh, and then I have to deal with different time zones. Mm -hmm. And sometimes if I want to have a bigger group of meetings, I have to do same meetings twice. One is more suitable, certain zones, one is another meetings to certain zones. But I usually get up very early, sometimes four o'clock. The meeting started from four o'clock or ends by midnight. One of my worst is really started from eleven o'clock in the evening and finished by seven o'clock. So it, it's very stressful. Mm -hmm. complex right. but it's but on the other hand it's 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 exciting mm -hmm. because that you know I, I, my previous role was for six years when i wouldn't say i was bored but you know I mean, of course you're always trying to do something new something more exciting but then it's good for me to change and so now i'm connected globally i, I, I was in the states for five months or four months you know, I visit all the major cities of um, you know, Europe. You know, I'm very connected with the Middle East. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I mean, to me, it's, it's a new something new. Mm -hmm. It's a new challenge, new dimension, um, new knowledge needs to um, obtain. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. it's, it's fun. And in doing so, do you get to? Mix the people more globally, yes, or for sure, mm -hmm. for sure. That's that's it's, it's also connected. Identify the center of excellence, mm -hmm. you know, and then and then bring them together, you know, and then to share their capabilities. And then in order to one thing is elevate the quality of the work or capability. The other thing is um, um, identify, find a differentiator. Why? Why? Our service is different from other companies. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, because of certain things uh, we didn't know, but we can do, and then uh, reposition ourselves, refocus ourselves, mm -hmm. and make ourselves more competitive mm -hmm. uh, in the market. Mm -hmm. So, we, we never try to compete with KPF, right, or, or SON, or Zaha, but if we want to do high rise for buildings. Mm -hmm. Why they want to hire income? What's the difference between income? Uh, probably we weren't very confident to about ourselves. I think my one of the important my job and responsibility is identify the differentiator. Why we're different from KPI. Mm -hmm. you know, so what do you what 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 do you think is the the, the edge of income? I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> I thought it's supposed to have an honest. No, 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 no. I, I, I think because because the difference is because we are very integrated um, uh, disciplines. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we have an environment scientists. We have we have a different discipline all sitting in the same room. So we come up with 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 a different approach and ideas, right? You know, I mean, so for example, you know, I was thinking my colleagues he was doing. A super tall, like a one mile long tall, tall buildings, right? And then so we have we have um, very talented engineers in the United States, but not only about architecture, but also the, the performance, you know. The, the, uh, so we work we work in you know, Hong Kong, UK, and. Uh, who can easily pull these talents and then leave. If you leave them alone, 
they cannot create something magic, but once you put them together, and then you create magic. So. Collaboration. It's only, it's not, well, collaboration is, is, is basic, yeah. but it's really uh, these individual setting axioms. It's almost like, I guess, some sort of cliche string of pearls, but I'm not talking about pearls, I'm talking about diamonds. Right? Diamonds necklaces. Each one is shiny, but once you put them together, it's astonishing. I don't mind even just one diamond. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, everyone does 24 hours right. a day. Right. You have 24 hours, I have 24 hours, right. and you're very busy with right. your across the globe, like um, like communications across the world. Um, but in addition to your practice, so you are also involved in, in a number of uh, other commitments to ULI, um, to Harvard GSDs and all these duties. Um, how do you juggle between all these roles? How is your 24 hours being but used. I don't I don't do everything myself. You know, mm -hmm. I'm a team. Yeah. You know, so so um but I do work long hours mm -hmm. um, because I like it. I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like I'm, I'm forced to do it. Mm -hmm. So once you enjoy doing it and you and you do have energy and you you are energized, you know, and of course rest is important, you know, I mean but I think passion is, is, is really the driving force. Mm -hmm. you know, so so I, I do all these um, with my team. And then, um, and then because I, I believe that's important for my team and it's important for me because working for a corporate sometimes, you know, you're working with a lot of smart people, but there's sometimes there's a, all kinds of policies, you know, rules you know, and then again is public rules um, and then so you need um, spicy kind of inspirations mm -hmm. and then I found my inspirations to working with these people I mean like hey I'm, I'm not I'm not very I'm not very active with AI I'm sorry um, but but I'm I, I, I know that they, they'll be always there, but, <laughs> but, 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 but no, but but UI is there's a lot of like investors, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, it's a different mindset, right. you know. I can already go beyond civic to design. I really encourage a good architect. You really need to touch different perspectives from an academic society or like Asian society, white Asian society. Mm. You know, because I think they're interesting to the people. Mm -hmm. they, mm. they, they never talk about the built environment because they don't have the members you know, to talk about. So we, we, we just walk in and say, hey, you need to start paying attention to the built environment. Mm. And they say, oh, right. We never thought about that. So and then we come in, we start working with them build the agenda so suit them to us right and then and then we, we walk into the GSC we say why don't we do more studios in Asia right mm -hmm. and, and they do have studios in Asia but we made it very clear I want studios for those cities you guys have never done mm -hmm. right I mean everybody go to Shanghai to, to Shenzhen or Beijing well, how about we do some Interesting thing like Xiamen mm. or like like Chen, uh, Zhenzhou, right? And how about the studio like uh, Jakarta or Manila? You know, I, I think I think we want to. We still think these are great resources, but we want to twist and do something different. I think we should change our membership basis for AIA. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, so you you just mentioned about the GSC, the, the studio. Um, can you tell us more about like what has been achieved uh, with that? We, we have done collaboration um, six years. Uh, we started. I want to complete 
10 years. I was, I was so naive. I thought, oh, we've done six years. So I signed a new contract for another four years. Oh, okay. And then we can celebrate the 10 year anniversary. And then the COVID came. So you can never plan your life. So we did six years. The first three years we did China. Mm -hmm. The second three years um, we did Southeast Asia. And then the the, the four years, the, the third part, we're planning to do Asia, I mean, do, do China, Asia, I mean, Southeast Asia, Southeast Asia, China, but then we did China, it was disaster, we, just, we, we did a student in Shenzhen, it's more like digital thing, thing we did, we just, we just don't, it was very like, successful to do this, and then we moved in, I brought some books. This is the I, I brought a few types of books. Depends on who you're interested for, for non income people. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be an income colleagues, you can always get it in the office. Um, <laughs> this is the, uh, the if you're interested about the GSC studio, mm -hmm. this is the first three years we come, we call it common frameworks. Um published by GSD and then rethinking the developmental city in China. So then they talk about these three studios and by a um, very talented architect, oh, Chris Lee, Chris Lee, it's very good. So, um, so um, and then this is another one that we call Jigsaw Cities. Uh, Jigsaw City is, is an income book. Um, uh, we, we did a shot in many years ago, I mean, a few years ago, we, we wanted to publish a book about shot in Utah because that was about 40 years anniversary. Shot in now is about almost 10 years, about I mean, 50 years now. So, so we started collecting materials about shot in. And then I decided to let's just not talk about shot in. Uh, so you see the book, if you're interested in this book, the first part probably 20% about shotting in time. But then I say, it's not about shotting, it's really about how we, how we build a place, like putting a puzzle together, um, like a jigsaw puzzle together. So I call jigsaw city. It's really not about architecture, not about world, not about public space, it can be utilities, it can be trees. So there's different pieces, and then you want to put a city together, you need a nation, you need a vision, right? And you can just look at it individually. So we publish. If you're interested in that, uh, about the elements of the city, Jigsaw cities. I brought five people, I have five copies, there's five copies that don't be agree with, you can only get one copy. <laughs> <laughs> and then this one is newly published, and it's really a shame. Um, we published just before the COVID um, called Underground Cities. Oh. The clients always ask about it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty not about build upwards, can we build downwards? I think we can in the future because the land is limited and the technology can, can overcome a lot of um, kind of a Difficulties and then over overcome your claustrophobic kind of a mindset. But actually, you think about how college and this a lot of the same things are around. But we just not push it to can talk about 100 years big cities and then leave the ground space for the natural environment. When you think about the COVID, I don't know if you know, like particularly like India. You know, because people not going out, the, the, the surface of the earth is not used, the, the sky become blue, and wildlife come to the city. You know, this is what 
the same thing. So what do we think about it? We mourn it. You know, I mean, one of the things we might hung up very much is we have to be the speech from me. It's the open space, but we'll see if we can talk about something. So we, we did a lot of research. There's a lot of images, articles, not only just a comfortable. Um, there's a lot of other people from outside coming with it because there's a lot of people that's so that's unborn cities. So these are something interesting. So for you, okay. Sean, yeah. at the beginning of before we start an event, we said we we're going to talk for 20 minutes. Oh, how much? <laughs> and then we're going to have 15 now? minutes of the Q&A, and yeah. then we're going to drink for the rest of the evening. But right. now we are already 45 minutes yeah. discussion. No, but okay. that was great. I, we, pay, we pay for the uh, food and drinks. <laughs> you, know, you. you really have to get drunk. Before you go but before you get it's not that, only wine, we, the cocktails, <laughs> the jeans, the vodka, the whiskey, you know, like don't waste it. <laughs> Please bring it on. But before that, um, let's open the, the discussion to the floor. If you feel, feel free to stand up and grab something and chat. I'm still okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I have a question. Yeah. yeah. Thank you again. Uh, my question is pretty simple. Uh, as a young architect, uh, in the beginning of the career, you do a lot of things that are mundane only, uh, but only later on in your career, you realize, oh, wow, those things are very valuable. Steve Jobs actually said uh, at one point that he credited his like, college um, experience with like, um, calligraphy to the beautiful font that Apple has today. So what are some of the great examples that you have in mean, your earlier career that you know, some of the things that you do today? Um, Thank you, Ricky. Appreciate other professions. Don't think architect is the best profession in the world and most important. You know, I, I, I through, through the, the uh, career, um, I, I, I learned how to work with other professions, you know, work with the landscape architect, work with the transportation planners, work with the interior designers, and then you know, value their contribution, or um, and then acquire them to inspire you. Because I think inspiration is happening on a daily basis every night. You know, not only just music, dance, literature, these days, like film, you know, media, I think mean, you need to um, never stop absorbing. I mean, the keep absorbing, make yourself like sponge, it's not to do with age or with what you career. Because I think this is a lifetime career that you can see. I appreciate 
the new leaders from from Hong Kong or Asia, mm -hmm. because traditionally people still see the Western world dominate the design. I mean, in Asia, of course, you see Japanese, right? You see some Chinese, you know, and young designers. But, but as a as senior, mm -hmm. uh, leaders, they really appreciate that there's a kind of different fresh uh, ideas and thinking. Uh, and so I, I think I, I've learned so much from not only just Hong Kong, but also from the Asia region. Um, and then, um, and then um, so now I'm, I'm working in different countries, and then so I think I, my value is to tell them there's a different way, there's different things, um, and so I really appreciate that, but in fact, very much. Oh, it's also related to GBA. Even the, the area of Shanghai, if I spend like five times, ten times, eight times, whatever it goes, it could be 20 times before we go there. So, how do we, as architects uh, in Hong Kong, uh, take it as a challenge, or perhaps uh, how do we focus or prepare ourselves to embrace this less opportunities? Well, it's kind of <laughs> I, I just want to make sure I answer it very carefully. No, I think I think you need to. I still have to believe. In it. I still always believe that it's really as as an architect, particularly in Hong Kong, you should be um, agile to working in different uh, environments. You know, we have been working in Beijing or even in, um, in uh, uh, the very remote countryside of China or in India, right? And we we are less bothered by the political situation, to be honest. And then our mission is to deliver the best product and to satisfy the end user. But then the point is, who is the end user? Is this the city or the community or the developers or the, the, the uh, people? Is that the way? So I think, I think as, as an architect or designer, I think, I think you know, we had Tianhai a couple of years ago, we talked about uh, Matt, right? right? We talked about Tongzhou, right? They always need things coming up. And then very soon you deal with um, uh, about tomorrow. Uh, uh, there's tons of opportunity for architects. But I think the, the, the bottom line is I think how can we work with these cities and come up with uh, authentic solutions to not to make every place look the same? We learn so much in coming. Look at what we have built or planned, you know, we'll be seeing. And of course, architects is easier, they right? all building, they look different. Right? But in general, you can drive around city and groups, it's still very, very similar. Right? So how do we how do we transfer how, how do we learn from those experiences and come up much more authentic solutions and then to make people feel oh I need to learn. That's something that's not easy, but we have to do work. Um, I, I'm not saying I'm not saying that what I did was was right, but uh, but if you go to Gigi Lake, that's Gigi Lake. There's no other place in the world where you can go from the house of Rogue City, that's Rogue City, Rogue City. Nobody like no nowhere else like that. So when we when we build a city or build a community, I think we really need to think. Who are the end users as the city zens? Mm -hmm. And that will not make that place last forever. Not to be expensive. I will show that in the chain of that team, right? And particularly now with all this approach, 
the climate change, the high performance, net zero. Um, I, I believe, you know, if we really truly believe those things, and then that will transform the design to a much more um, resilient and sustainable long term solutions. Yes. Yeah. Lady, ladies, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll really have to. Thank you. It's a more personal question. Um, because you, you mentioned several times this word passion. Uh, yes. And at the same time, you're running a huge team. Yeah, right. So uh, I run my own tiny farm. Right. Um, of course, my question will be, how do you deal with that kind of switch of, let's say, role and position? Um, it's inevitable there are some sort of antagonistic moments between businesses and passion. And um, I'm personally very interested in hearing either your struggle or things that you have come across that you feel like. <clears throat> what is your superpower in de dealing with it? You know, I, I think I, I struggle less than before. You know, before you, um, how should I put this? I, I think, and of course, you get beat up, right? More and more, and you become more endurance, right? Um, but I, I think passion will never die because that's the true you. You never, you, you have to be true to yourself. It doesn't matter how small the fire, you know, how the, the fire is still there, right? And then, um, and then you, you just be honest to yourself. And then I, I don't believe it's black and white or right and wrong. But I think the, the the important part is to find the balance. You know, you, you should you should never say um, passion is more important or reality is more important. I mean, to me, it's really find the balance. I always calm down. And we have a lot of the young, passionate men. They get frustrated, angry, they cry, they yell and scream. Seriously, because they they have fantastic design capability, but they may not be survive living in concrete. We do have a lot. Of Things you have to follow, right? And then we're not only responsible to our clients, we're responsible to our shareholders. They buy a stock or they invest on a stock, you know. And then so you really need to uh, find a, a good balance. The, the difficult part is how to find the balance. Then I think that's a few years of practice. And then do I have time? I'm tired. Yes, I I did. But I cried. I did when I was very young, you know. But but once you start to learn more and more, then then you understand there's no perfect world, and it's really you you in charge of the decision. You be responsible to yourself at the same time. You have to be the partner, but responsible to your team, and you have to be responsible to. Who pay the salary, right? So that's this to me is a try, try. It's almost like a stool. Try, how to try that three legs stool. Tripod. Tripod. Yeah. yeah. So so um, the client, not the client. It's 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 really the company or let me say the client who pay you, and then because I don't own the company, I always live on the salary. Hey, right? But the client or the company, and then your team and yourself. And then, of course, sometimes it's not very balanced, and then you, you do everything to make it balanced. And then that's the skill. That you practice. But never give up any side. It feels a little martial arts like equilibrium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All yeah. right. It's easy to say it's hard to do. Go and then on. again, I say it's practice. You, you need to you need to be very patient, you need to understand it's not there yet. You're learning, you need to practice, you, need, you can do better and better. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh yeah, oh. yes, you. <laughs> Sorry, it's hard. Um Actually, it's a little bit of an extension of that question is um, over the last many, many years of practice, I'm sure you have faced some 
sort of not so successful projects, moments, yeah. setbacks, or got beat up by something. Yeah. Is there any lesson challenges that you can share with us that's carry you through all these years of practice from different roles, different regions, like from APAC to now overseeing the entire global practice that you can share? I think I think one thing is, I think it's important to find a good client. I mean, never compromise. You know, I mean, I, I sometimes I don't do it very often, but I do walk away from client. I mean, particularly us, you know, sometimes I, I get really frustrated. I go home and I say, well, why do I have to take this shit? You know, I mean, I'm well educated. I'm, I'm, I have a lot of pride. I'm responsible to my society. Why do I have to deal with this shitty client? And then, but I think you have to, particularly now, we have to choose our client carefully. And you don't. Some some client is just just a shit, and, then, and it's really not worth it. Anyway, so I think that demoralize you. You never expect you can get the result you want, and you even regret. You know, at the end, you know, get things get built and you carry that credit. It's just not worth it. But and then again, it's a bread. You know, you have to get some bread. So. And again, but be very careful with your time. That's why. Yes. So. Um, I have a rather juvenile question. <laughs> um, so, as a junior architect, um, who's in between jobs and right. really looking for a big thing. Right. Um, so, We've talked about the Greater Bay Area. Right. We've talked about Ginger Lake. Right. We've talked about and and looking around the room. I guess we're all educated overseas, right. um, experience overseas. Um, however, we're right now in Hong Kong, right. so we talked about shitty client as well. So taking on Hong Kong as a client, right. um, how you mean Hong Kong developers? No, Hong Kong. Well, Hong Kong projects. So Hong Kong, whether it's Hong Kong government projects, Hong Kong private clients, but Hong Kong itself. Because yeah. it seems like um, as an architect, we nowadays seems to escape into these yeah. projects that are overseas. We, we believe that that is a project where we can really realize a design and we seem to run away from Hong Kong projects. So what, basically my question is, what how when you look at Hong Kong, what do you see and and how what is the way forward for Hong Kong? I look at Hong Kong beyond just buildings, you know, architecture. I look yeah. at Hong Kong is is a community with interesting people and diversity and um, you know um, um, it's all about people here rather than the built environment. Every time I yeah I go somewhere I get pissed off and angry. And, yeah. You know, and I say this is this is hopeless. Yeah. And then, but but to be honest, it's improving slowly. Mm -hmm. Could could be done better, you know, and I I, I don't want to uh, you know, nothing personal. There are good buildings. There are a lot of bad buildings. And, yeah. And, really, and again my passion about public rooms, how much public room is a shape. Yeah. It's, it's, um, I think a huge room to improve, but then it's really you have to go back to very deep and um, the government, <laughs> right? The, yeah. the policy we're talking about, the Hong Kong's building code is mm -hmm. so old. Yes. Can you even accommodate a new? design approach, design solutions, because they, they're never trying to change the building code or accommodate the future of it. Yeah, but the, as, as an industry, do you think we can actually make a change here in Hong Kong? I think we can. It's just sometimes it depends how fast 
Yeah, because yeah, projects are getting slow. faster yeah. and more complex, yeah. but time for architects to sit down and design yeah. and think about solutions yeah. are being are being pushed to minimum. Yeah. Because the fee no, I mean, in that section yeah, or I that agree. stage is I lower. Agree. I agree. I agree. Yeah. But but it's it's a it's a it's a big problem for everybody to work together to resolve. Yeah, you know, that's that's a, you know I mean as I'm very engaged with the UI and I'm very engaged with Asian society and I think AI should be much more vocal. You know, and then um, I'm a non-member. Sorry, guys. I'm really you sorry. You should become a member and <laughs> help to drive this um, association. Becomes more impactful to the local communities, and then, then uh, I think it's really people. I mean, people was not trained to be vocal or critical about what we're building. Right? And, and when I first came to Hong Kong, I was very very surprised. There's not many bookstores. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Still not right. And they're shutting down. Right. 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 And I still hear I'm tired, you know, yeah. because I, I still think this is one of the most exciting cities in the world. I'm not giving up. People yeah. keep asking me, like, you can go away. And the people in Italy have a global role. I said, no, I'm still coming back. I will take another trip very soon, but I'm coming back because I'm not giving up. I'm, back. Mm. I'm still very passionate about it. I spent 25 years here. Yeah. And then, Three of my kids are born. Two of them born here, grew up here, and then they, they're very proud of themselves because this is such a unique place for good or bad. And then sometimes, smell a place is, is memorable too. Right? It's not like everything has to be clean and beautiful when they're designed by. That's kind of yeah. yeah. Designed by you know KPF or SOM, right? You know. So so I mean. I mean, it's it's just authentic. Yes. Authenticity is, is also very very important. So I'm, I'm very very deeply in Hong Kong, although it's not so. But it is because it's a perfect kind of an authenticity and make it. Yeah. Yes. We still have time for drinks and food. Right? Yeah. Yes. Um, I'm not an architect. Oh. Um, but I was a builder and then so now I'm just an entrepreneur and social innovator. Oh, great. So, so I looked at you know, what we share in a different perspective. Uh, we are in the same industry, anyways. Um, we are in the same city. Right. So, um, so I arrived on what you shared about. Um, passions um, for Hong Kong and uh, passion. I don't know how to, how to describe it. Right. <laughs> um, I, I came across a, 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 a quite interesting definition of work uh, recently. Right. It's, you can call it a uh, job or work. Um, Career or right. profession right. or a calling. Mm, a calling, yes. yes. That's a good do, word. Do, do you have this sort of calling in a role? Uh, uh, I think that's a very inspiring word. I have to think about it. Um, calling less. I think I think it's really to me it's more like a I, I, I still like to use the word passion. I enjoy to do what I do. I'm having fun, but at the same time, I, I make some money to feed my family. And, um, but I, 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 I still come back to passion. It's a really nice perspective. I mean, including now, I mean, one time people say, oh, Shana, you're happy. One time I was interviewed by. Media. Is it Sean? Do you have me? I said, What do you mean? 
No, you know, we know you used to do a lot of design, you could design it, but you probably don't do design anymore. What do you think? Did you do design last time? That's all that's meant for this program. So he said, then that's my question. Are you happy? I say, I, yeah, I'm happy. I'm happier. Like, why? I said, because I don't want to do design by myself. I can, I can really nourish her. 10, 20, 100 designers. I can help them make design because they probably don't want to deal with any kind of policy. I can I can help them to deal with any kind of I can them. So they can have them do So I don't I don't have to draw myself and I want to see do a good design we need together. To me, that's a little more spiritual. Yeah. I'm not very spiritual. <laughs> yes. so you, you mentioned authenticity. Yes. Yeah. Um, it reminds me of David Chang's last night picture where he talks and travels the world and thus between cuisine in search of what is authentic through all the different adaptations. Who? David, David Chang, he's a New York chef. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's right. Yes. That yes. Yeah. Right. Um, but if you, if you can watch it, it's actually really hard to master because some of the best authenticity is what is happening to you as a society like the global. Yeah. So, and I've not heard of many architects who talk about sustainable cuisine in this context, in the context of the work, the work of this one. So, I'm interested to see what you see as the biggest risk or threat or challenge to the biggest part of the business, in particular with globalized um, The biggest risk is really, again, come back to the client, the client doesn't appreciate it. Right. These days, I heard um, the client always ask the design what they ask for. Is design something Instagram worthy? That's the latest, right? Like all the clients say, "Oh, I really want an Instagram worthy space." Yes. Um, I, I think I think it's again. I think the risk is really. Are we educating our comment in our individuals and listening to this is um does our community does our community do they appreciate our process? Because sometimes the good thing is they don't appreciate it. They don't appreciate something um, in your but but sometimes it's, it's also, and then again, we should come back to some of the elements. It is not easy for you to easily wash it up. The time, you know, we're talking about can you create the kindness? Like, if it is really authentic, then you will be able to. Um, I, I, I believe timeless is also very important. We always want to design timeless for it. It's 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 a, it's it's so many perspectives. But I think it's really a change of public to understand. Right. No, but designed by data is also the data is local, right? The data is local if, if we really truly use the good data rather than the bad data over wrong data. And then you should come up with something more. Keywords, passion, persistence, and find a good client. <laughs> and ask for, ask for, 
，啊，低声，嘿，很细，咚咚。It will come back. It will come back to haunt you. Right, right, right. Don't, don't just because you're hungry. People are starting to say that. Right. 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 Okay. Thank you so much, Sean. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of the uh, AIA Hong Kong chapters, I would like to thank you for no, thank you. for sharing and also for generously supporting sponsoring this event. Oh, thank you.